welcome back everybody. So here in my area in Georgia, we are well into our spring buildup in the beehives. The bees have been working on building up that population for the spring honey flow uh, for a few weeks now, uh, maybe a couple of months, and that honey flow should start around mid-April or sometime. So uh, of course with that buildup, uh, we are going to be faced with swarm season, and swarm season is pretty much uh, right on us or just around the corner. Uh, in the past, I've never really put a whole lot of emphasis on catching swarms. I have pulled them out of trees and bushes and however I could find them in the past but I've never really put up a lot of swarm traps I have built them myself in the past uh, with very limited success but this year I'm interested in expanding my apiary and of course one of the strategies for expanding your apiary is to collect swarms so let's get a little bit of a closer look at how I'm gonna do it so of course there are different ways that you can prevent swarms in your apiary. I'm not going to deal with that in this video. I'm more interested in showing you how to collect swarms once they have already uh, come out of your hives and headed to the trees. Uh, so this is probably about the most expensive way that you can uh, set up swarm traps. I got these standard flower pot style traps from Man Lake and this is not an ad for Man Lake. They just happen to be the cheapest source. These were about $21 a piece. Uh, I went ahead and got the pre-made swarm lure from them as well, which is about two and a half dollars a piece. And also, since I really don't like the idea of nails in my trees, I went ahead and got some relatively inexpensive straps so I could strap these to the trees instead of having to nail them in. So all in all, these straps are eight dollars. The swarm traps are twenty-one. These were two fifty. So I'm in this about thirty or thirty-five dollars. Now consider that a swarm is basically a package of bees in a tree. You've got a good amount of bees, and you've got a good laying queen in there and also their stomachs are full of honey so they're going to build up very quickly the value of that from a uh, from a bee supply warehouse and a package of bees is going to run you anywhere from 90 to 120 dollars so once you catch a swarm you have paid for the trap and made a little bit of money extra to pay for other traps so uh, basically what we're going to do here is I have cut some three quarter inch plywood and the only reason that there are screws in this is because this piece became delaminated. But I had this three quarter inch plywood already. So I just cut it uh, to the correct size to fit on the back of these things. The instructions on this package say to put these directly onto the tree, but I really just didn't want to do that. So essentially what I'm doing is I put this right here in the middle of this uh, three quarter inch piece of plywood. And then the swarm lure goes in afterwards. Now they tell you not to open this envelope, just to staple it to the inside, but of course that's just an invitation to open it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna check out and see what's in here. It's just two small vials, and I'm really not sure what's in here. It smells a lot like lemongrass oil, so I'm sure that's a component of this. So that just gives a slow release of the swarm lure. Man Lake claims that it'll last about three months in these, uh, in these, uh, in these swarm traps. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna put this here we're going to staple this to the inside of this somewhere and that'll give us the bait that we need and then we're going to screw the uh, the lid of these swarm traps onto the plywood So that's there. Now we're going to go ahead and put the body of the trap onto it. Now this is just made to mimic a hollow tree log. That's the preferred uh, resting place uh, for bees once they swarm. So this is just made to mimic that. All we're going to do is position this so that these little grommets are exactly where I want them on top here. And then we're going to put a couple of screws in the, ba uh, in the base of this so that so that that stays. Now these things are made out of uh, like a fiber board or paper board or I'm not sure what you would call it, some kind of cardboard. It's very dense and Man Lake claims, Man Lake claims that these will last three seasons up in the trees. Uh, I am not so sure about that claim. I'm afraid that once it rains six or seven times on it, they're gonna start coming apart. Hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully there's some kind of a waterproofing material on there. I really don't know. We're just going to have to find out. But lots of people use these. It's kind of a tried and true method. So, you know, they must work okay. So now we're just going to drill a couple of holes into the sides of this plywood so that we'll have a place to put the strap. So 
I mentioned earlier that I'm just not a fan of putting nails in the trees. The instructions on that swarm lure say to wire this directly onto the tree with nails that are stuck into the tree. I've got a lot of sawmill videos and I'm sure hopefully a lot of y'all have watched those but I know what nails do on sawmill blades so I'm just not interested in that and also I just think it's kind of a kind of a crappy thing to do to a tree to stick a nail in it. So that's all I'm gonna do. That's the swarm trap. That's complete right there. And we'll take these around and we'll strap these to the trees and uh, and we'll wait. So let's go ahead and get started. So I mentioned that this is probably about the most expensive way to catch swarms and it is. Uh, there are a lot of other options if you want to go that route. Uh, there are people on YouTube who are making these things out of five gallon buckets, out of hive bodies, out of nuke boxes. So you can make these out of whatever you got laying around. There's one guy that makes them out of Home Depot buckets and I'll link to that. That's a really good video and he does a good job of explaining it. Uh, so check that video out. I'll put it in the description. And uh, that's a really good option if you want to save a little bit of money on this. So the instructions say to mount these in about 30% shade and 9 to 12 feet high with the back of this four wheeler being about 3 feet and I'm almost 6 feet plus the length of my arms. I think that, I think that that's fine. I doubt that the bees are going to be able to tell much of a difference.
guys, we put out six traps around the property here. I just kind of strew them all about in different places. Um, this one right here is kind of down in a swamp uh, in our on our land here in a creek bottom. And, uh, you know, it's, I'm just kind of experimenting to see where they might go. The beauty of putting out swarm traps is that uh, you never know what kind of bees you're going to catch. And if you don't have an apiary yet and you really can't afford a package or two of these, uh, this is a great option to start off with. You might catch you a couple of swarms and those swarms might even be good wild survivor bees and those bees might be mite resistant and probably good honey producers and you'll start off with a really good genetic stock. Now if you already have an apiary, you're not guaranteed to catch your own bees. You might catch wild bees, you might catch your neighbor's bees. And the bottom line is if they, if they light, if they pitch in one of your swarm traps, they're your bees. Now on the other hand, if you see your neighbor uh, panicking and running across the field trying to get his cloud of bees back, I'd probably just go ahead and give them back to him because uh, you want to maintain a good relationship with your neighbors. But uh, just the bottom line is, get these things 9 to 12 feet off the ground. Um, partial sun, partial shade, and not, not too hot of a spot for them. What they're looking for is a good place, uh, good place to live and to set up shop. So just kind of use your own judgment there, and uh, there's a good chance you'll catch yourself some good bees. But that's all I've got. I hope that you'll consider hitting the subscribe button and hitting that like button before you go. Um, this video took me about three days to do, so of course I was hoping that I'd have a swarm in one of these traps to show you, but it didn't happen. Uh, hopefully on an ensuing video we'll be able to check out a swarm pitched in one of these traps. But I will see y'all next time. I appreciate you watching, and, um, and that's it. See y'all next time.